So I don't know if you heard, but staying at hotels in Hawaii just got a little bit more expensive. The transient accommodation tax or hotel tax in Hawaii has increased by about 30% in recent months. Now, that doesn't mean that it'll cost you 30% more to get a room. It's just the tax on the room that has increased by 30%. Now talking about taxes may sound boring or terrifying depending on who you are, but I find this discussion really interesting because there's this whole backstory to why the hotel tax is being increased. By the end of this video, you'll know more about the hotel tax and why it's going up in Hawaii. But I also wanna share how learning more about this tax has been great for me and how I learned that sometimes our initial impressions of things aren't always correct. And as we look deeper into things, our opinions can change, but more of that later. So what is a transient accommodations tax? It's basically a hotel or room tax for people who stay for less than 180 days or six months. It's been a tax mechanism to charge tourists a little extra for visiting Hawaii since the 1980s, and that money is divided up each year for various purposes. The most pressing was the allocation to each of the different counties. And in the past, the counties have relied on this funding because of the limited taxing powers that each of the counties have, which is basically real property tax and the county surcharges. In its most recent iteration, the TAT was set at 10.25% of the room rate as a temporary tax to be discontinued in 2030. But you really think it's gonna be temporary? Come on. And the way that the counties received their share of the TAT was based on a fixed split totaling $103 million. And this was both good and bad. The TAT was a guaranteed source of revenue that the counties could rely on each year. It's basically like when I was a little kid and I got allowance each week. I did the dishes on the weekends, I cleaned the bathroom once a week, and I took out the trash before the garbage truck came in the morning. Of course, then there were those times when I forgot to take out the trash the night before and I could hear the garbage truck coming up the street and I would have to run outside real fast to make sure that the trash cans were on the curb. Because if not, my dad would get mad. And all for $5 a week. But hey, stable and consistent income. But getting back to the TAT, because the TAT allocation was set at a fixed amount, it never accounted for better years in tourism. So even if it was a booming year for visitors with plenty of money coming into the state, the counties still received the same amount as any other year. And this turns out to be a very big deal. For example, pre-pandemic in 2019, TAT generated over $600 million, growing from $421 million in 2015. However, the counties received less of the overall share from 24.5% in 2015 to just 17.2% in 2019 because of the fixed allocation amounts. But things have changed. All of that tax revenue, that $103 million, is now going to the state and the counties were allowed to establish a TAT surcharge of up to 3%, which they all now have. And so this is where that increase in hotel tax is coming from, not from the state, but from each of the different counties. So what this means now is the TAT is 13.25%, an increase of about 30%. You had the 10.25% TAT going to the state and the 3% TAT surcharge on top of that going to the respective county. So let's say you booked a room for $300 a night. That's a pretty modest price. I mean, you know, it's not a hole in the wall with roaches, but you know, it's not the Four Seasons. With a 13.5% TAT and a 4.7-ish percent general excise tax, which is a totally separate tax, that comes out to about $354.60, with tax accounting for roughly 18% of the total. And keep in mind, this doesn't even include resort fees and parking fees, which, Resort fees can be about $40 a night and parking can be about $30 a day. And if you think maybe you can get a better deal with Airbnb and other short-term rental platforms, you could, but this tax increase still applies to those operators as well, some of whom for years haven't paid their taxes. But recently these platforms are working with state tax officials and these individuals are being notified that now they gotta pay the tax. So I wouldn't expect any tax-free discounts to keep happening for too long. And of course, some in the tourism industry have argued that this increase in the tax will hurt visitor numbers because it may price out certain people from coming. However, even with the tax increase, the visitor projections are expected to return to pre-pandemic times within just a few years. So what's the big deal? Well, initially I thought this was kind of unfair that the state was taking away so much money 
that belonged to the counties. I mean, it was an important source of revenue. And as a taxpayer, to me, that meant one of two things, right? An increase in property taxes so the counties could make up that difference or a reduction in services and programs at the county level. And either result would have been bad for locals. And all so that the state could just get an extra $103 million per year. So shame. Nah, 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 just joke. But the thing is, when the tax revenue projections came out, I was surprised. Because while it seemed like a bad thing to take away the TAT revenues from the counties, it may actually be a way for the counties to receive more funding. And that's a good thing. Because that means better roads, support for police and fire departments, hiring of more lifeguards, and improvements to emergency medical services. All of those taken care of at the county level. And as you can see, in a matter of about five to six years, the counties will have basically doubled their tax revenue from this TAT surcharge. And the people who should be benefiting from all of this are locals. So what looked like a bad thing may actually turn out to be something good. So we'll see. So I want to make this video to let people know that hotel rates are gonna go up in Hawaii. And for travelers, that may be something that they wanna know. However, there are a few things that this increase in the hotel tax has really shown me. And these lessons have nothing to do with taxes or revenue or anything like that. The first thing is that it's okay to be proven wrong sometimes, to change your mind. And it kind of feels good. I don't know how I come across in my videos sometimes. The opinions I express are just my own. And I know that I'm not always right about everything related to Hawaii. I mean, I read the comments, so I know. And as I'm getting older, I'm finding that always thinking that you're right or trying to prove that you're right all the time isn't the point. I mean, being open to new ideas and new ways of thinking to me is far more interesting. And always being open to learning from others' perspectives and experiences is important because growing as a person is just as exciting and rewarding as being right. The second thing I learned from this is the importance of understanding where some of the tourist money comes from and where it goes. Economists and government officials often throw out big numbers when they talk about money as if billions or hundreds of millions of dollars can even be fathomed by your average local person. So by highlighting this small change, I hope people can see that there is potential for some good to come of this. Because this video could have been a rant about how things are continuing to get more expensive in Hawaii and hotels are getting more expensive. But instead, it's a closer look at why they are getting more expensive. Like, what is the story behind that? And the final thing I learned from all of this is that going through the numbers, it showed me that visiting Hawaii is a luxury and that it can be expensive. And I think we all know the realities of living in Hawaii as being expensive, but I think sometimes we as locals forget that visiting Hawaii, you know, staying at the hotels, eating at the local restaurants, visiting the attractions, is also expensive. I hear a lot of people asking how they can give back to Hawaii if they come and they visit. And I appreciate that sentiment, but I hope people don't feel like they have to like overdo it because they feel bad for the poor locals. I think just being respectful and following the rules is enough. And by staying in appropriate accommodations and contributing to this tax, these visitors are helping to pay for our quality of life here. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Thanks for watching and aloha.